Hello everyone, this is 3DX and if you are new to the channel, I just want to let you know that this video I'm going to be essentially going through the process of how I created uh, a model in particular and in this case I'm going to be creating a stylized piano um, now I don't have a piano in real life so I have to be looking at reference images here that I found pretty much on Google so if you want to make a piano just look for reference images on Google search and then you'll find plenty uh, but anyway I'm going to be creating this by for the most part just using polygon primitives uh, and that is because obviously this is a really geometric type of model and notice that I'm going to be making this mostly in pieces so I'm using different um, geometric pieces to just put it all together and that's usually what I recommend if you want to keep it simple uh, just make it in pieces and then you're just gonna it's just gonna be a lot easier to make the model at least in my opinion it is and that's usually what I recommend if you find that whatever you're making is looks a little bit too complicated what you can always do is just make it in pieces and then if you ever need to weld that together you can always do that later as well so if you make something in pieces it's not like you're stuck with that you can always just uh, merge pieces together later and then just weld them as well so that's what I, I always recommend people is to just make the model in pieces so in this case I'm going to be modeling creating the low poly model here in Maya and as well as the high poly because for the high poly what I'll do is I'm going to just use the same model and then just bevel the edges uh, the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the keys and uh, so those are going to be modeled in for the high poly but for the low poly it's just going to be a flat uh, rectangle pretty much for where the uh, keys are going to be baked onto obviously you could still um, create the keys uh, separately for the low poly as well if you were planning to make this for say an animation where a character is going to be like touching the keys and you get to see it up close and something like that in that case of course i would recommend you actually model those out even for the low poly model but in my case because i don't plan to use it that way uh, this would be using this would be used mostly as a background piece uh, you don't get to touch the keys and see them move separately so that's why i'm just going to keep that as a triangle and bake the keys as normal map information so notice here that i combined the top and the uh, main base of the triangle of the uh, piano here uh, like i said i modeled it separately first and then i decided i was just gonna weld this together just because it would just be a little bit better in my opinion just to weld it and like i said you could do that with other pieces as well And then I also want to make the chair where uh, the person playing the piano gets to sit as well. I'm going to keep it relatively simple. And then what I'll do is I'm going to cut some of these pieces in half just so that the, uh, the UVs are shared. So I don't want the uh, UVs to be unique across the entire model. I want some pieces just to share the same UVs. And for that I'm just going to cut some pieces in half. Except for the keys I'm going to keep that as one and then for the base, the front of the base also as one so that it's more unique. Just in case you want to add more details to that. And so I'm going to start to UV this and for the most part I'm just going to be using simple planar maps as well as just cut the edges in the areas where the geometry uh, changes but at least 90 degrees or so and for some of these i'm just going to use the uh, auto uvs because for ge super geometric pieces you can just use the auto uv uh, if you are going to use auto uvs i do recommend you freeze transformation on your model first uh, because if you don't do that sometimes it just kind of messes up a little bit so i recommend freeze transformations if you're going to use the auto uv function
and then I'm just gonna uh, lay out the V pieces and I do want to kind of like clean it up a little bit just to pack it a little bit better I may have gone a little too close with some of these pieces you do want to have spacing between your UVs because um, if you don't have enough spacing you will see some UV bleeding sometimes where you can see artifacts on edges of pieces so if you ever see that you may want to consider adding more space between your UV shells like I said I may have gone to, uh, too tight on this one some of these could probably use more space and the lower the uh, size of the texture that you use the more spacing you will need for your UV shells in this case I think I baked at 1024 so I thought that was pretty good for this could still have used a little bit more spacing I think and then I'll use a tool for renaming the object and this is going to be my low poly if you want to use that tool specifically there's a link in the video description it is an affiliate link um, and if you don't want to use it you can just rename stuff manually as well and then I'm just going to mirror some of the pieces that I cut in half and one thing I like to do is just to offset um, the overlapping UVs just because sometimes in Substance Painter uh, it doesn't bake some of the areas if you have uh, overlapping UVs it doesn't always happen but I just do this just in case and then I'll duplicate the uh, low poly group and then rename high and essentially for this I'm just going to bevel some of the edges and I'm going to use this as my high poly model so it's going to be a relatively simple bake and I'm not really going to add any extra details uh, although if I wanted to I could just add those in Substance Painter as well and then I'm going to create the actual keys so those are going to be modeled in so that I can bake them in Substance Painter And I'm going to have to combine these and make sure that they use the same name as the um, original one that was there. So that I can bake by name in Substance Painter. And one thing I'm going to do is also assign a different material so that I can use as an ID map. Uh, so that I can easily change the colors in Substance Painter by just using an ID map. And here in Painter what I'm going to do is just, I think I just use the standard settings for baking. And just make sure you're baking by uh, mesh name so that you don't see any weird artifacts. In this case, I was seeing something weird with the ambient occlusion, so I just switched it. I'm going to be using uh, the 2DX stylized material. If you want to learn how to make that, there's a link in the video description. It's a tutorial where I show you how to make it. And for the colors here, I'm just, I just want it to be... Um, you know, I didn't want it to be just like a plain black color or wood color so I just want it to look a little bit more stylized so I went with the gray and black color a little bit shiny as well so it just looks a little bit like a modern type of you know piano here and it's relatively stylized not super high detailed or anything like that Uh, but that's pretty much it for this one so here is what the render looks like uh, within a marble set tool bag now if you like this video make sure you hit the like button if you're new i recommend you subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one i'll hopefully see you in a future video do you see this environment right here i made this really quickly using maya zbrush substance painter and substance designer and unreal engine you too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time to make an environment like this one all you have to do is make a few simple props put them together in unreal and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment.
The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine. So you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.